Yes. I did actually forget a color. So first of all, in fact, two colors. It was on a smaller piece of paper. This is the first one to eight, okay, colors, which you all have. You probably paused it in order to get those. And then the last two. Probably because titanium white was on the list. I was forcibly not remembering it because I sort of have a love-hate relationship with white, as you all know in my classes. But anyway, nine is light blue permanent, 10, titanium white. <clears throat> Any blue will do, as I said, we're actually gonna use the white to lighten it. It'll be for the area up here in the sky, which we'll get to, okay? So there you go, you have all the colors now. I'll show the shoots to you as we move along. My brushes, I still have the same brushes that I had the last time. I just love these squares. I'm working on a small canvas, so I'll probably use the smallest square I have and a round brush. <coughs> Excuse me. A number three round brush, which is probably, you know, I think a Kiko in my um, Tuesday night class would be quite uh, happy with that brush, you know, for any of her paintings. But she even goes, that would be the biggest brush. But she's an amazing artist. Okay, so that's the brushes. So we leave those there, put the other ones over there. Then basically, I just want to explain to you, we're going to divide it up into all these separate areas. And we're going to imagine that <coughs> the magenta base behind it is actually a border between each color. And as we apply each color, we're going to leave little gaps in the colors themselves to let that magenta shine through. No matter where we apply all these sections, and especially in the roof area and this little background area of the cottages this is going to be the pure background coming through <clears throat> this is the whole idea to get this contrast this simultaneous contrast between each individual color and that fantastic magenta color in the background so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to move this over here because i've already sectioned them off in my little 16 by 12 canvas but you know we have lots of them because we go to our favorite, <coughs> excuse me, tiger uh, shop for these. I'm sure you must be, you know, buying them out each time for each of all the classes. But anyway, okay, what I did was I'm gonna put these brushes down. I have my little pastel pencil. Now an ordinary soft pastel will do, a pencil will do, a little brush with a little bit of color on it will do as well. Just to put in these contours first of the, the mountain area the base of the mountain, forget about the house for the moment, another gap between the base of the mountain and this line, then forget about these furrows for the moment, and then a wavy line down here, then a second wavy line down here, and then your last line in the foreground getting closer to the base of the canvas there. And then just below the mountain we, we all know these little cottage shapes at this stage, don't we? and we just apply it with a pastel or a tiny bit of <coughs> color on your brush. The furrows then, the best way to start the furrows is more or less start in the center. I just did it all quickly so that I wouldn't waste your time, you know, doing it for you. And then you just start moving out with your perspective on both sides, slanting it ever slightly more as you move out, you know, until the lines almost become flattened, okay? Almost in line with this one. But this one is almost straight down, okay? And then bring it out, like, like it looks like an arrow, you see going in there like that. This is the other side. If you think of it as an arrow, big arrow like that with the two edges of it each time. Just work out maybe one side first. And you're almost bringing it up flat again on that side, slanting it, they're getting wider towards the foreground because this is your perspective. Slanting it, bring it up there, almost flat. If we went on to another one, it'd be almost out that way and almost in line with that again. <clears throat> so basically, that's what we have. And we're gonna start applying the paint now. Okay, so I have, <coughs> excuse me, my blue violet here, which we're gonna start with. Normally we start with the sky, but in order to get this gap of magenta between the mountain and the sky, we're gonna put in the mountain first. And it's so loose, we don't stick to the line that we have there, okay? we. We use it as a guideline, but it doesn't have to be exactly on that line because we want to keep a little gap between that and the sky, which is magenta at the moment. We go across, you know the usual, a nice little mix there of water with your blue violet. Just 
to get a nice little consistency as i said sort of a yogurty consistency okay moving around twist your brush if you're using a little brush if you're using a big brush just go for it you know go for it if you have a huge canvas and enjoy every minute of it okay so i've lifted up this as i said i'm going along the contour of the mountain very very loosely you know very very loosely you don't have to do this exact we're not you know we're not learning how to be copyists or, or fakers now that's that line in first okay then i just want you to gently just bring down hop skip and jump over it a few little lines of the color down into it a few little lines see just very erratically okay very erratically bring it down like that very erratically making sure that you leave gaps like that to let that lovely magenta shine through okay then you clean off your brush that's the sound of me cleaning my brush then just clean it off with a bit of tissue then we go into our light um, sorry it's not a light we, we use that I didn't use that because that was the one I left out uh, we're going into our brilliant blue that's it brilliant blue and we're adding a little bit of water to it as well again okay and I'm just going to show you just to get that consistency again and we're going to start off at the base of the mountain okay and the base of the mountain the same idea just do a loose line along that base line that we put in with our pencil or pastel just a loose line like that it doesn't have to be straight or anything like that and then just working from that a few little hip hop skip and jump little lines erratic lines leaving the gaps of the lovely magenta coming through okay going all the way across like that all the way see all the way over to this side all the way up to that in there like that you see okay <coughs> just to make sure that you have that nice and erratic down there you don't want a straight line because the, the greens that go in next will be very erratic underneath that okay and you might have you know you can almost even make it wavy at the base of the mountain because those greens are going to have a wavy top a wavy fringe or whatever you want to call it on top of of the green area okay so we're doing that can you see that see how even a little bit up into that maybe a tiny bit there tiny bit up in, up into it as well just to give that effect of shadow and light on the mountain now that's basically how you start it okay so i'm going to leave you with that i need a drink of water i'll be back to you in two seconds <laughs> 